Hi, this is Pastor Rick. I'm very glad you joined me again. I'm still going through how to use a spiritual journal and how to have a quiet time. Part of the quiet time was reading the Bible and the other part is praying, which is basically speaking to God and then being quiet and listening to God's response. So the last thing I want to talk about is the S, A-C-T-S, Acts, Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and then supplication, sometimes we say the word intercession, it means praying for others. 1 Samuel 12, 23 says, Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. So one of the opportunities we have as a child of God is to pray, not just for ourselves, but to pray for others. You know, when Jesus Christ comes into our life, it is a, a desire that we have to seek God's blessing, not only for ourselves, but especially for people who are around us. And it would probably be safe to say that the most consistent prayer that we do focuses on the needs of relatives and friends and neighbors and people we work with. Uh, and many of these we pray for don't even know the Lord. Um, one of the things that you can pray for other people is pray that they might come to faith in God and uh, that they, God might give you an opportunity to be a witness to them. And others are Christians who are living maybe beneath the resources and the privileges that are available to a child of God. And sometimes we need to pray for people with love that God would get them back to the place where they need to be if they're a child of God or if they are not a child of God, that they might come to faith. The, the word says in John chapter 15, verse 7, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it should be done for you. Well, that's kind of a catch. What it's saying is that if you know the word of God, and you understand God's will, and then you pray for God's will for someone, then God will... Uh, fulfill your prayer request because you're praying his own word back to him. God will never break his own word. You cannot and I cannot just tell God what to do. That's not what I'm speaking about. What I am saying is when you know the word of God or read the word of God and you pray a, require, a request back to God that's in agreement with his word, then God is pretty much obligated to fulfill it because he will never break his own word. He always keeps it. And so I encourage you to intercede for or to pray for others. <clears throat> One sample would be like if you have somebody that's having a drinking problem, you could pray for the person by name and say, Lord, please deliver so-and-so from this drinking problem or show, show my brother, my friend, uh, what this drinking is doing in their life and doing to relationships, open their eyes, in other words. That would be a prayer. Another one would be praying for, if you were a child, praying for your parent and just saying, God, give my father wisdom to make a good decision and choice in the work that he, he uh, is seeking, help him to find a job. Uh, another one might be uh, for someone who has a, a relative like a grandmother or mother, father that needs Christ, uh, pray for your friend and have wisdom to know how to share the truth about Jesus Christ with her loved one. You can pray for other people and God will hear your prayer. You know what's wonderful about it? It's not selfish. You're not praying for yourself. You're praying for God to guide and to provide for or to bless others that you know in your life when you do that you're really touching God's heart because he sees you're not asking for yourself. You're asking for God to bless someone else that sincerely touches the heart of God and he'll listen and he'll answer and you'll be amazed at what God can do. Well, the Lord loves you, so do I. I encourage you to come and visit us here at Living Hope Baptist Church and uh, uh, wish uh, to have a wonderful day today. Make sure spend time with God.